Hello, my name is Steve Reed. Welcome to the Remote Creative Podcast. Today, we are going to answer the age-old question of what comes first, brand identity or logo design. But before we continue, if you are into entrepreneurship in the creative industry and living your best remote work life, then be sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on all notifications so you don't miss out. And hey, throw me a like if you enjoyed the show. All right, let's do this. Is it an age old question? I don't know if it's an age old question, but it's certainly something I see happening time and time again, where clients will come to me and they just say, Hey, I want this. I want that. I want that. And I got to say, Whoa, 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 let's pump the brakes a little bit. And so we'll have a little bit of a conversation to go over where they should begin and what types of things should be put in place first. And we're going to begin by doing what's called a brand identity test and credit goes to Joanna Gavallo Design at Gift Design Studios. So she came up with this brilliant little exercise that we're going to go through here right now. So be sure to check out her stuff. Now, before we dig in, I want to prepare you a little bit. You're going to take a rapid fire test and you're going to decide on something very quick between A and B. A is on the left, B is on the right. I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to make a snap decision as to what the answer is. Okay, ready? Let's go. Which shampoo is more expensive, A or B? Which coffee is the strongest, A on the left or B on the right? Last one, which cookie brand has the healthiest ingredients, A on the left or B on the right? That's it. Did you get it? Do you got your answers? Okay. Now, did you happen to notice that in each of these cases, the logos for A and B were all identical? There's your shampoo logo, our hair care. There's your coffee logo, Arabia Coffee, and then the bakery with the rolling pin. Exact same logos. Also, the copy was exactly the same. Daily clarifying shampoo on the left and on the right. Morning blend, morning blend. Delicious, crunchy cookies, grandma's recipe. Exactly the same copy, but completely different look and feel. I'm not lying to you. Check it out. Exactly the same. So how were you able to make a decision as to what you were looking for that quickly? Well, that all comes down to the brand identity. What exactly is brand identity to begin with? Well, the brand identity is the sensory, visible, audible, even tactile representations of the brand that are developed from a brand strategy to resonate with the target audience. This is very critical. They're developed from the brand strategy. Well, what is the brand strategy? And we're going to cover this very briefly. I know I talk a lot about it, but it is a plan of action that helps a business achieve their long-term goals and create a connection with their target audience before any design work is done. The brand strategy is actually critical because it defines so many important things. The brand's positioning statement, their mission statement, their vision statement. We define the target audience, who that is. We do research into them. We interview, we ask questions. We make a lot of these decisions in the beginning to determine what our personality is going to be for the business. And you may have never heard that before. Businesses have personalities. That's another thing I talk a lot about. Yes, people connect with personality. So once you have the brand strategy in place, you basically have the mind and the soul of the brand, the ideologies, the positioning, the mission, the vision, the personality, the voice. You have all of that created, then you can jump into the brand identity, which is now how do people interact with this using their senses, touch, taste, smell, etc. right? One of the best ways to start is with a stylescape. Now, what is a stylescape? Well, Flow State Branding says it's a collection of brand assets such as colors, typography, images, language, tone, design elements, etc., combined together to provide an overall visual aesthetic of a brand. In short, stylescapes show 
how the brand should look and feel as it would be executed across anything the brand touches, but without carrying those decisions through to collateral. So a stylescape looks something like this. These are a couple stylescapes I've done for my clients in the past, and they have all of these elements to them. And they're really wonderful because often I'll print these out and ship them a big poster and they'll put it on their wall so that anybody creating social media content, looking to get business cards designed, anything like that, they can share this stylescape and say, hey, this is the look and feel of our, our brand identity. So anything that's produced from here on out should look like it belongs with these components that have already been defined in this stylescape. And this bleeds over into the website and it covers all of these different bases, right? And so my conclusion is identity first, logo later, because it's far easier to create a logo that goes along with the identity than to try to extrapolate some type of identity out of a logo. And that may not be the best way to go, especially if there's no strategy in place, because then you're just designing stuff. You're just throwing stuff out there and just crossing your fingers and say, I think this looks great. I think it's going to work. Let's, let's go with that. That's not a plan. <laughs> That's just winging it, right? I mean, you're investing so much in your business. Don't you think it's important to put some kind of strategy together and then out of that strategy, create some visual identity. So you got this overhead view of like, yeah, this, this is how everything should look and feel. This is what people should experience and actually test it with people, show it to them and say, what do you think of this? Would you want to buy from this company? How do you like this look and feel? Does it remind you of another company you don't like? Does it remind you of a company that you like a lot? Does it remind you of something completely unique? What, you know, what type of feedback do we have from this? And then we take the logo from that. And now that logo is going to mesh really well with what we already know people like. And so again, the identity is far more critical than the logo. Cause as you can see from that test that we did, people notice the identity first before they notice the logo. So we always want to start with the brand identity, the choice between brand identity and logo. But before that, we want to start with strategy so that the brand identity and the logo all flow nicely. They're all dialed in. They're all just resonating with that target audience and we're good to go. So that's what I recommend doing. And that's it for today's show. So if you liked anything you heard in here, please high five that like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on all the notifications so you don't miss out on anything else. And if you want to listen to this podcast on the go, Check out the audio version of the Remote Creative Podcast over at anchor.fm forward slash remote creative. Now, get out there and create some greatness.